Look at this rock. It's covered in a strange pattern of dark spots. Patterns like this are nearly always traced back to life forms, microbes, and bacteria. But this rock isn't from Earth. It's from Mars. The rock was recently discovered by NASA's Perseverance rover. They claimed it was the best evidence to date of alien life on Mars. This very well could be the clearest sign of life that we've ever found on Mars. We've heard similar things to this before. Potential biosignatures on exoplanets or organic molecules in the clouds of Venus. So let's get to the bottom of this together. If they are right, this represents a significant turning point in the course of humanity. An answer to the question we have been asking for thousands of years. Are we alone in the universe? I hope you're ready. Our story begins in the Yezero Crater. NASA's chose to send Perseverance here because it looks like it would have been friendly to life in the past. The crater was once a vast lake. Various rivers flowed with water, and all of the right materials were present to support life. But today, Mars is dry and arid, so Percy is searching for fossils of ancient life. On June 9th last year, they drove into an inlet channel and a slab of hardened rock stood out to the team. They drove closer, and what they found was amazing. The rock sample appeared to be covered in these tiny little dark spots and large circles. The team immediately gave them a nickname, Leopard Spots and Poppy Seeds. While these might look pretty normal to you and I, they set off alarm bells for the geologists at NASA. Everyone was naturally really excited, so they immediately got to work deploying Perseverance's whole toolkit to analyze the sample. Given the importance of what they might have stumbled upon, the team decided to drill into it and preserve it for further analysis. A key goal of Perseverance is to drill these samples and collect them so that one day we can send a mission to retrieve them and bring them back to Earth. Remember this for later. And so they drilled, taking a sample and sealing it in a metal tube. The sample was nicknamed Sapphire Canyon, and it's one of the most valuable samples ever collected on Mars. Percy even took a selfie right after drilling the sample. You can see the freshly drilled rock down here. Little did they know at the time, what they were going to find when they analyzed the rock could change the course of human history forever. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves and declare that we have found alien fossils, we need to be careful because we've been wrong before. Our hunt for life on Mars is a story that now spans multiple decades. In 1976, NASA's Viking landers had finally made it to the Red Planet, and it was time to perform the first experiments designed to detect Martian life. They essentially just squirted nutrients into the Martian soil to see if anything was alive in it that would eat the nutrients. All of a sudden, the Martian soil started to release gas, as if there were microbes and bacteria that was inside the soil digesting it. Everyone was so excited, they thought we had proven that Mars has microbes. But the scientists eventually realized reactive chemicals in the soil would very easily explain the results. No need for life, just salts. Finally, as we entered the 2000s and started putting rovers on the surface of Mars, spirit and opportunity, the evidence all seemed to point to the fact that Mars was once very similar to Earth, covered in vast oceans and rivers of liquid water. Naturally, this led scientists to believe that fossil records of alien life from this time must be hiding around these lake beds and rivers. Enter Perseverance, sample in hand, or should I say robotic arm, ready to make the biggest discovery on Mars to this day. Perseverance has a number of tools in its arsenal to perform analysis and help us search for signs of life. First, there's Pixel. This device basically helps us find which elements are present in the sample. And then we have Sherlock. It uses lasers to detect certain minerals and organic molecules. Now when Percy aimed these tools at the sample, it made everyone's heart stop. It's exactly what they hoped for. The mudstone contained organic molecules, carbon-based compounds, right where those little strange spots were. And it didn't stop there. The rings also seemed to be filled with iron, phosphorus, sulfur, and two very special minerals, vivianite and gregite. 
On Earth, vivianite and grygite are often associated with decaying animals and plant matter. That's a huge clue. Over the next year, scientists on Earth pushed this data to its limit. They looked at the composition of the sample and hypothesized about what might have created these weird spots. And finally, just a few days ago, they made their announcement. We put it out to our scientific friends uh, to pressure test it, to analyze it, and go, did, did we get this right? Do we think this is signs of ancient life on Mars? And after a, a, a year of review, uh, they've come back and they said, listen, we can't find another explanation. Um, so this very well could be the clearest sign of life that we've ever found on Mars. In simple terms, it's actually insane. They had found all three key ingredients for life in one rock sample, liquid water, organic molecules, and an energy source. It's the first time they found all three of them in one sample. If you think about it, it's kind of like if you stumbled across a campsite with a campfire ring, some ashes, and some leftover food. That's really strong evidence that someone had camped there. Even if we can't see them right now, they did. Of course, they did consider some alternative solutions. And what they found honestly shocked me. Those two key minerals they found, vivianite and grygite, suggest that the reaction that took place is something known as a redox reaction. We know that microbial life can perform these reactions, but there are a few other possible explanations, at least in theory. And so, uh, presumably, the fact that it's all in one place together indicates that the life was doing its thing in that one place. If, if they weren't caused by life, there's a couple other hypotheses for what could have caused them. It, it, it can be done if there's, if there's high temperature reactions. So that was one idea. But then you look at other aspects of this rock and the chemistry seems to be telling you this was laid down in a low temperature environment. The first is just plain old normal geology. At high temperatures, if you heated the mud up and kept it hot for a long time, we would see the same results. But there is literally no evidence for the rock experiencing this high heat. In fact, vivianite specifically only forms at low temperatures and it would be destroyed if things got too hot. So since we still see it in the samples today, high temperatures are probably not the solution. The second alternative they considered was acidic water reactions. Essentially, if really acidic liquid had flowed through the rock over a long period of time, it could have caused these minerals to form. But again, the problem with this hypothesis is we would expect to see a ton of other evidence for this acid, and there's literally nothing else. In fact, they even found a mineral called olivine in the veins of the rock. Olivine is destroyed by acid, so again, probably not the solution we're looking for. The third hypothesis they tested was whether the organic molecules could have just undergone this reaction themselves, driven by a catalyst in chemistry. Catalysts are just substances that help to speed up a reaction. So if one was present, in theory, the findings could be explained without the need for life. But again, this seemed pretty unlikely at low temperatures. The scientists all agreed that there's not really any strong evidence to support this idea. So looking at all of these options, it's pretty clear that ancient microbial life is the best possible solution for what we have observed. The findings perfectly line up with what scientists have suspected to be on Mars for so long now. If the microbes were living in the Jezero Lake mud, using the sulfur and iron as a source of energy, they would have left behind these leopard print and poppy seed patterns as a kind of waste product. Everything seems to point towards this idea that the mud was once filled with life, and those signatures were locked in time as the mud hardened into stone. So if everyone is extremely convinced that the only plausible explanation is life, why don't they just say that? Why this could have been maybe a potential biosignature, a hint of life on Mars? I feel like we've heard it all before. Well, as Carl Sagan said, Extraordinary claims demand extraordinary evidence. And to be honest, there's no claim more extraordinary than saying you found aliens. And so we need to go to Mars and get the sample ourselves. For discoveries like this, NASA has something called a confidence of life detection scale. It's basically a framework that they use to rank how confident they are that a discovery is really evidence of alien life. It goes from level one, being detection of some kind of signal we know can come from life, to level seven being multiple independent follow-up observations of the actual sample giving the same results. Aliens. 
Right now, this detection is probably somewhere in the middle of that scale. NASA haven't come out and publicly said where they rank it, but if we want to get it up to a level 7, we need to go out and bring that sample back to Earth. Why do we bring samples back from Mars? Well, for all the ingenuity, all the smarts that we can shove into a spacecraft and put on the surface of Mars, it does not match the ingenuity we have here on Earth. The Mars rovers can only do so much with their limited toolkit, so if we can bring those samples back to Earth and study it in our labs, we can be sure whether what Percy found really is life or not. The answer is Mars sample return. Like I said earlier, Perseverance has been slowly collecting samples of interest on Mars for the last few years, sealing and preserving them for us to study one day. As it stands, Percy has done everything it can possibly do from the surface of Mars. There's nothing more we can remotely extract from the sample until we get our hands on it. It's really hard. It takes three missions, one to take the samples, one to put a rocket on the surface of Mars and put the samples in orbit, and another to scoop it up from orbit and bring it back to Earth. That has been such a daunting task that NASA has really struggled to get going with it, but we are now officially moving out on Mars. For the last few years, Mars sample return has been in limbo. Budget cuts to NASA have been threatening to cancel the mission altogether we could ultimately be able to discover whether Mars was alive. If there's ever a moment for us to come together and answer one of humanity's biggest questions, I think it's this. We need to bring Mars to Earth. If it all goes well, perhaps sometime in the 2030, we can expect to have the sample in hand. I do wonder though, once we have the sample back and we study it and presumably find that it really was alien life, what changes for humanity from that point onward? I thought about this quite a bit. I think if we find evidence of life on another world, it will change the way all of us think about being alive. It will change the way all of us think about being a living thing. And I believe it will also get us all together. Arthur C. Clarke once said that two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe or we are not, and both are equally as terrifying. I think we may have just found our answer.